everybody, and welcome to another great week in our 340 writing series. This week, we're going to be talking all about first conditionals and how we can use them to support our opinions. So in this lesson, we will look at some examples of first conditionals, also known as if sentences, and how they are used to support an opinion. Then we'll follow up, as usual, by revising our use of first conditionals to support our own opinions in our essays. So what materials you're going to need? The same things as normal. You're going to want to have your notebook for taking notes as you're watching the video. You want to have your qualities of a good friend essay, which by now I imagine is looking very colorful. We're going to add to that color this week, so make sure you have your highlighters and colored pens or pencils handy. And you're going to want to have that writing workbook where you can upload the picture of your final revisions for your teacher. All right, so let's get started by talking about the meaning of first conditionals used to support an opinion. And we're going to do that by having another look at Chick Hoffman's essay. I told you we were going to look at it a lot. So the first thing we're going to do is I want to find all the examples of first conditionals that Chick Hoffman uses in this essay. And he uses it quite a lot. Now, he doesn't use any in his first body paragraph, but in his second body paragraph, he actually starts the paragraph with an if conditional sentence. We can only be happy if we live in the present and not some faraway future. He then ends the paragraph with two more if conditional sentences. And we're going to look at these in more detail in just a minute. Then in his third body paragraph, he also includes an if conditional sentence here right at the end. We can be the same cheerful, optimistic, enthusiastic if we choose to be. And then he uses the if conditional one more time at the end of his essay to give us his final bit of advice. So as you can see, Sheikh Halfan uses the if conditional sentences throughout his essay to support his opinion. So now let's have a look a little bit closer at how he does that. So in this essay, Sheikh Halfan uses if clauses or first conditional to show the results of an action. This is one way he is supporting his opinion. So remember, in if conditional sentences, we have a condition that if we do the thing in this condition, there will be a result. So here in this first sentence, Sheikh Kalfan tells us that if we live in the present, the result is we can be happy. In the second example, he tells us if we choose to be happy, then the result of that action is we can be happy. Now, inside these sentences is also the opposite idea. That's one feature of if conditionals, is that inside the condition is the idea of the opposite. It's implied that if you don't live in the present, if instead you live in some faraway future, then you will not be happy. If you do not choose to be happy, then you probably won't be happy. So this is a feature of if conditionals um, that we can understand. So here's one way that Sheikh Khafan supported his opinion. The other way that he used if conditionals to support his opinion was to give advice. So first conditional can also be used here to give someone advice about how to achieve a result. So if we look at the first sentence, here our condition is, I used the wrong color, if we want to be happy. So here is the condition, if you want to be happy. And then his advice is, see and enjoy the wonderful things in our life right now. So that is his advice on how to achieve this condition of if you want to be happy. Now, if you don't want to be happy, then you don't see and enjoy the wonderful things in life right now. 
It's up to you. It's your choice, right? In our second example, he tells us our condition is if we spend our time worrying about the past or the future. So now he's telling us if this is something that you do, then the result or his advice will be you will never find happiness. So here you see how Sheikh Khalfan has used that opposite, that negative idea to support his opinion. So if you, if you don't want to be happy, well, then you should spend all of your time worrying about the past or future. But if you spend your time worrying about the past or future, you won't find happiness. So again, that idea is inside each of these sentences. And finally, he gives us another condition. If we remember this, and here he's talking to about the previous sentence about remembering to be happy, then we will discover the secret of happiness. So again, if we don't remember all of the things that he's taught us, we won't discover the secret of happiness. So here is how he is using advice to support his opinions about how to find happiness. Cool? Awesome. So now let's look at the structure of these sentences. So the first thing we want to look at is how many clauses are in these sentences. And by a clause, I mean a subject, a verb, and an object. So if I look at this first example, I have a subject, we, can, only be, that's my verb, and then happy is my object, right? My um, adjective object. And then if I keep reading that sentence, I see I have another subject, we, live, there's my verb, and then I have all of this is my object. Where am I living? In the present and not some far away future. So as you can see, these if conditionals have two clauses. Each one of them has two clauses. In fact, they each have an if clause and a result clause. That's what we call that. So we have the conditional clause and then we have the result clause. Now, if we look at these, where do we see that if clause? Well, we see it here at the beginning, right? Also here at the beginning, but I also see it here at the end of the sentence. So, as you can see, we can flip that sentence around. We can start with the if clause or we can start with the results clause. Either is correct. Awesome, but not. There is one rule, and it's a punctuation rule, about how uh, about when we put the if clause at the beginning or at the end. So as you'll see, let's look at this example here. If we start the sentence with the if clause, then I must separate the if clause from the results clause with a comma. But if I put my if clause here at the end of the sentence, you'll see, oops, no comma, no comma. Man, English is weird, yeah? So, to review, the structure of an if conditional sentence for talking about the results of an action is in our if clause, we start with that if adverb, and then we have our subject and present simple verb. Now remember, your subject and your verb need to agree. So if you have a singular subject, that's right, you need an S on that verb. If you have a plural subject, no S on the verb. So that's my if clause. Then in my results clause, I'm going to have my second subject and typically, we use the modal will or won't because we're talking about a future action. Now, in our examples, Sheikh Khalfan actually used can for one of his if sentences. 
The most important thing, though, is that you must use a modal here. So will or want, can, the most important is that you have a modal plus, of course, that verb infinitive plus your object. So our example here is if you study a little bit every day, so that's the if clause, the thing that if you do this, the result will be you will do well in school, right? If you don't study, you probably won't do well in school. See how that works? Then the structure for giving advice is just the same. We have our if clause with a subject and that verb in the present simple, make sure they agree. Then in our secondary clause, our results clause, again, we have our a subject, and then we're going to use a modal for giving advice. Can, must, should, ought to, have to, those modals that we use for giving advice. So some of our examples here are, if you come late to class, so that's our condition, my advice is you should apologize to your teacher. You should. It makes things a lot better. Another, if you do your homework now, so this is the condition, my advice is you can watch the game later, right? So if you do that, right, you can watch the game later. So do your homework now, yeah? Then you can watch the game. And then finally, if you have a cold, so here is the condition, my advice is you must rest and get better. Please stay home, stay safe. All right, so I think we are ready. It's now your turn. We're gonna stop the video here and down below, you've got some questions and exercises on if conditionals and sentences. So go and do those and then come back. We'll check your answers and revise our own essays. See you soon.